Hey everyone, I'm Instructor Brooks. I want to thank you for supporting my channel. Make sure you hit subscribe to join our community. Today I'm going to discuss everything you need to know about the heel strike phase of gait, and then we're going to finish off with a test question. So if you're ready to learn something, let's go. every phase of the gait cycle, you should consider three joints. Ankle, knee, and hip. That doesn't mean that there's a muscle contraction occurring at every joint, but it's a great way to make sure you don't forget one. One of the biggest things that most students forget is they think about the ankle and the foot when they're thinking about the gait cycle, and as they go through it, they do everything right for the ankle, but they forget either the knee or the hip. So if you always say, I'm gonna look at the ankle, the knee, and the hip, you're always gonna be hitting all the joints that you need to hit at the bare minimum. The first phase of the gait cycle is heel strike. In fact, the gait cycle is defined as all the important events that occur between two successive heel strikes on the same foot. So now let's take a closer look and apply that strategy of ankle, knee, and hip. First, looking at the ankle, there is an isometric contraction of the anterior tibialis to hold the ankle in neutral dorsiflexion. Moving on up to the knee, we see the quads are eccentrically contracting as the knee slightly flexes to absorb the force of the ground moving up through the lower leg. Finally, at the hip, we see an isometric contraction of the glute max to hold the hip in slight flexion. And now for the test question. During heel strike, if there is damage to the femoral nerve, which of the following deviations would a PTA most likely see? A, circumduction, B, genuine curvatum, C, compensated Trendelenburg gait pattern, or D, vaulting? The answer is B, genuine curvatum. Damage to the femoral nerve will affect the quadricep muscles, weakening them during heel strike. This will cause the person to slam his or her knee back into extension, which then leads to the genu recurvatum. I hope you learned something from this video. Don't hesitate to post questions in the comment section below. Follow me on Instagram at Instructor Brooks. And if you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button and become part of our community. If you got all that covered, have an awesome day. And remember, knowledge is power.